Thank you, Mr. President. And in advance, I ask for my remarks to be printed in the journal. Colleagues, today I rise with deep gratitude for the privilege for having served in the Michigan Senate. And I apologize for my emotion. If we're honest, I never should have made it here. But with the support of the Senate Republican Caucus and many volunteers, we won the impossible. And I never took this honor for granted. My staff and I worked seven days a week to serve our community. And because of our tenacity, we helped bring millions of dollars into our community at the expense of both the Republican and Democrat caucuses in two elections. Thank you, Kalamazoo County, for allowing me to serve you. Many people paved the path for all of us to be here. And for us women, we owe the honor to Senator Eva McCall Hamilton, a Republican from Grand Rapids. Her portrait hangs over there on the West Wall. Senator Hamilton was elected in 1920, the first year women could vote, and was the first woman elected to state office. When she ran for re-election in 1922, one press endorsement stated she had a record that any man could be proud of in the state legislature. Ultimate, she, ultimately, she lost her primary election, but she left her mark for women who wished to hold public office. I wish to thank our Lord Jesus Christ. He has been with me my entire life, and I give all praise and glory to him. Now, all of us here owe so much to our family, and I am no different. My father, Richard Wilson, and my mother, Kathleen Crawford Wilson, raised a strong-willed daughter. Both of my parents experienced hardships as children, yet they taught me resilience, faith, and a work ethic in a value of family. It is my hope that I have been an example to their values while serving here at the Capitol. As the only girl of four Wilson children, my brothers have been crucial to my success. My two older brothers, Keith and Mike, roughed me up as good brothers do, and I took it out on the baby, Aaron. Keith taught me to fight no matter the odds. Mike taught me patience, a lesson I sometimes struggle to accomplish. Aaron taught me that rules matter. We had a loving yet challenging upbringing, especially when our mom died at the age of 44, and we children ranged in the age from 11 to 26. As a girl of 19, this was a life-changing moment, as it was when our dad died eight years later. While my brothers made sure I stayed humble as a child, they have been so proud of what I've done as an adult. Thank you. Two of my brothers, Mike and Aaron, are here today with me in the gallery. When my parents passed, my extended family made sure we were loved and included. Those family members are too many to name, but I hold each of you in my heart. As many of you know, I love my husband and children dearly. My husband, Nicholas, is a behind-the-scenes man who embraces, sometimes reluctantly, my strength, motivation, and off-the-wall ideas. I often describe our relationship as, I dream it, he built it. When we started dating in 2000, Nick was the yard sign guy in my first election. This should have been a sign that we would run nine campaigns in 18 years. He has been my yard sign guy in all of them. Nick, you have loved me despite the public path I have taken. You have always encouraged me to be who I am, no matter if you wanted to head down that path. I am lucky to be your wife, and I love you and thank you. He couldn't be here today. He's flying to San Francisco. Nick and I have parented four children. Samantha, my oldest, couldn't be here. But Samantha, you may not be of my blood, but I could not have a more perfect daughter. Dream big and don't let fear stand in the way. You have the entire world to experience and conquer. I became pregnant with Taijan my senior year of college. A counselor told me I would never amount to anything if I chose life for this precious child. Taijan, I am always grateful I chose life. You are a gift to so many people and have blessed me tremendously. You gave me a reason to live, survive, and achieve. Keep aiming high. I know you will reach your dreams, and I hope you run for office someday. Samantha and Taijan, thank you for enduring the sometimes rough road. You banned me from school conferences and would not let me be the parent to ride during your driving tests. Yet you have each played pivotal roles in my and others' elections. Dwayne and Torian Jackson are my kids on loan. 
Thank you, Andrea, for allowing me to help raise these fine young men. Dwayne, you embraced your dreams. You went from poor grades and not playing sports to succeeding in college and making the college football team. You have fought for your dreams for so long. Do not stop now. You have proved that dreams can come true. Keep fighting and dreaming. Tori, it's been hard for having me run for office during your senior year. Samantha and Tajan experienced this when they graduated in 2014, but at least they had lived this life for 14 years. I'm sorry you had to watch horrible commercials against me when all you wanted to do was watch the dumb videos on YouTube. But Tori, you have so much potential you do not see. You will accomplish great things when you believe in yourself. And yes, you will win your basketball game tonight. My four children are amazing. Thank you for being proud of me. I am very proud of you. Tajan, Dwayne, and Tori are all in the gallery today. Over the years, other people have adopted me and taken me into their family. Tony and Jim Ivey, John and Marie Polderman, Brian Long, Caroline Wiley, Harold and Zoe Shootmaker, the bulk of my family. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for choosing to love me. All of us have had highs and lows while in office, and I'm blessed to have many friends back home who have had my back. They are too many to name, but thank you to my friends and supporters back home, including the Healing Circle, the crew at the dugout, the Boatyard Gang, and the Queens. My time in office has been supported by many other people. Kalamazoo County Treasurer Mary Balkama and Senator Tanya Shootmaker, you are my sisters. We have been a formidable team together, and we have done incredible things for our community. You both taught me how to be better and to do more. You invited me into your families and gifted me the most precious gift, your parents. I never had a sister growing up, and I'm so blessed to now have two. Over my eight years in the House and Senate, I have developed many friendships. First, I would like to thank my staff. I have asked a lot of each of them. Over our four years, we have sent out nearly 40,000 handwritten notes, pictures, and tributes. We always set the bar higher, and they never complained to me. Stephanie Bogoma has led my team from the start. I first interviewed Stephanie in my kitchen as I made cookies. I don't know if she knew what she was getting into, but she never complained. Stephanie, you know we don't take no for an answer, and you have found a way to make the impossible possible. Thank you. Alex Morris, Tara Schultz, and Alyssa Stabile were my front deskers. I've never known what to call them because they're the glue that holds our office together. Alyssa, who currently holds the role, is always cheerful but tough. Like me, she has a passion for this institution. I've had a number of legislative directors who keep getting stolen from our office. Colin McDonough, John McNamara, Megan Hicks-Bush, and Nate Henschel have served well. When I needed a new team member, Nick Plescia didn't hesitate to jump from one fire to another. Nick has been a great strategic mind that's been added to our team. Back home, I've had a district office of great people. Joyce Yoon, Jordan Vukovic, Delexius Walker, and Dylan Wyckoff. Delexius and Dylan jumped onto our team this year despite it being an election year. Their passion for others is infectious, and I'm humbled by their belief in me. Our office has also had incredible interns, many of whom we keep in touch with. Thank you all for serving the people of Kalamazoo County with honor, respect, and devotion. I have another group of staff who have never been on my payroll. I am known for stealing people's staff and assigning them work. I hope I don't miss anybody, but here are just a few. Amber McCann, Lindsay Vogelsberg, Tom Davis, Craig Ryan, Jen Merchant, Jess Avril Hammond, Mike Mullane, Zoe Alstrom, Erica Smith, Alicia Cottrell, Patrick Yaki, Rich Miller, Dan Juan, Terry Marquardt, Jean Lutherlow, Catherine Japica, Nicole Hankowitz, Brent Borma, Scott Hughes, Adam Bightley. You are also responsible for what I accomplished. So if you ever wondered how I did it all, it's because I stole everybody's staff, including Democrat staff. You helped move major legislation, whether it was veterans issues, sexual assault, female genital mutilation, domestic violence, vulnerable roadway users. Some helped me crack open the checkbook so we could support healthy babies, autism services, medical services, clean water, roads, and economic development in impoverished communities. You each came on and worked extra hours to get legislation across the finish line. 
You took my phone calls at all hours. Thank you. Now to the lobbying crew out there, you're too many to name, but you know who you are. You helped us sharpen our policies. You made my arguments better, and you made my legislation better. Thank you for always working with me, no matter how obstinate I might have been at the time. Now to my legislative partners. First, I'll start with the House. Representative Adam Zemke, you're my brother of a different party. With Bob and Christina, we showed what could be accomplished when politics are thrown out the window. Representative Dave Maturin, I was crushed by your election loss. You have served our community well. I enjoyed carpooling with you and Tanya, and I'm happy to let you chauffeur me anytime. Representatives John Hoadley, Beth Griffin, and Brant Iden have been effective local partners that I will miss working with daily. Senator-elect Eric Nesbitt, you have always been a trusted advisor and friend. Thank you for making me a verb and telling me when you went Margaret on someone. Minority Leader Jim Ananick, I'm still mad at you, but I know our friendship will continue. You have shown us that the dissenting view can come from someone very relatable, friendly, and generous. While your caucus took some shots I didn't like, it, like at, during the election, you stood up for me last year when I and my family were unfairly attacked by people in your party. Thank you. Senator Curtis Hertel, I hope you show your softer side more. You're not a bad guy, no matter what I may have said about you. <laughs> Senator Dave Robinson, your passion is inspiring, and I always enjoy listening to you. You will always be my friend. Senator Rick Jones, we tackled a lot of tough subjects this year. You were a partner who was always willing to handle the press so I could handle the other details. Thank you for showing me you can win the battle of the press every time. Lieutenant Governor Kelly, thank you for your friendship. You helped me find my passion for autism, and you taught me how to create partnerships to get legislation across the finish line. Senator Dave Hildebrand, we've had some fun at Shuffleboard. As I'm leaving and reconciling our account, I believe you still owe me $240 million. Thank you for considering the people in my district and for always being kind. You somehow make people feel good even when you say no, but I still want my $240 million. Majority Leader Arlen Meekoff, thank you for allowing me to serve my community the way I wanted and not questioning my votes. You trusted me and loaned me your staff. I wish everyone could see that soft side. You are a good man. Senator Tom Casperson, you made me an honorary youper. For that, I'm grateful. You taught me a lot, especially that the UP deserves to be its own country, although we will settle for statehood, the superior state. You also stole Greg Jennings from me when he was my guest in the House. You introduced a resolution making the Green Bay Packers Michigan's official football team. I should have known what you would be like as a caucus seatmate for four years. This has definitely been a flaming duck session. Please keep me on the text group with Marty. And speaking of Marty Fatanti, I don't know if you're here or if you're watching Dateline, but I always want you on my team. You are still fired, but I will hire you back any day. I hope you keep texting me about nothing. You have always made me smile, and I will see both of you in God's country in February. Senator David Knizek, you're, you're lucky you're still in the speech since you're not here. I don't know how to follow up your speech. Thank you for your sense of humor, but also for your caring side that most of you don't see. While many people have heard about the barefoot juggler who passed us at mile 23 in the Marine Corps Marathon, which it did happen, most people don't know why we were there. You introduced me to two men I have never met but who have impacted my life. Alan DuPont and Jody Tetzloff were fellow Marines you served with in Iraq, and all of you made it home. But Alan and Jody were not able to overcome their invisible injuries and took their lives. You continue their legacy, and I am humbled you included me. Honoring Alan and Jody was not as simple as training for and running a race. Three weeks before the marathon, David broke his foot and sprained his ankle. We did all 26.2 miles with him in pain. But to be honest, we could have avoided all this. When David was struggling in the race, I asked him what Jody and Alan would say about us being there, thinking that might inspire him. With a sincere face, David told me that they hated running and would have asked why we were doing this. David, we will run this race again, and I look forward to future escapades with you. Senator Tanya Shoemaker, this one's hard. I don't know what to say. 
You've been my partner in crime, and it has been an honor to be mistaken for you the last eight years. <laughs> Wherever we have been, we have had fun. You have gotten me to do things that nobody else can, including running for this seat. When I needed advice, you gave it to me. You taught me how to be successful in advocating for my community or how to get my legislation across the finish line. No one is better at figuring out how to partner, the path to take, or the issue to lead. You work so hard and yet make it look so easy. All future leaders should study you if they wish to be effective. Thank you for being a mentor, confidant, friend, and sister. I can't wait to see what fun we have in the future, whether it's climbing mountains, or if you ever run for another race, please put me on your team. The eight Republican first-termers named ourselves the freshman eight, and as the freshman eight become the senior two-thirds, I'm grateful for your friendship. Senator Pete McGregor, you've always had my back. Vulnerable members are given what should be easy chairmanships. When we broke the story about the abuses at the Grand Rapids Veterans Home, you insisted I lead the hearings and investigations. You knew that doing the right thing is always the best policy and political move. Thank you. Senator Dale Zorn, I'm going to miss those stories about your mother-in-law. Ask him about it. You are a thoughtful and kind man who many overlook because of your quiet nature, but truthfully, no one is funnier. Senator Jim Stamas, you are my big brother. You helped to teach me how to be a strong presiding officer and to make my own decisions. You called me often during the campaign, and I always knew how much you cared for me as a person. Senator Ken Horn, I have never met a more willing yet reluctant partner. You would always say no, yet agree to do whatever I asked. I really am going to go on a diet after lame duck and would like to re-challenge you. I will win this challenge. You only won the last competition because you were the only one in it. But seriously, you taught us all how to lean on our faith when life beats us down. Losing a race is nothing when you have your family. Senator Wayne Schmidt, I have had eight years of fun with you. No matter what I say, you turn red, but you have been my support when I needed someone to yell at. You never took offense and instead supported me however I needed at that moment. Thank you for letting me be me. Senator Marty Nolenberg, you are underestimated. You have a kind and giving heart. Our friendship grew in the Senate and I am lucky to call you friend. I will visit you at your restaurant and hope you'll buy me a drink. Senator Mike Shirky, we have had a complicated relationship. I am loud and opinionated. You are methodical and often quiet. Yet we have formed a strong friendship these last four years. As we grew to know each other, we discovered we are more alike than different. Family oriented, hardworking, traditional, devoted, loyal, and questioning. Thank you for all you have taught me. There are people who have meant a lot to us who are not here. John Kivla and Peter Battaglia left an imprint on me. Both men were generous, funny, and loving. They would give their shirts off their back. They will never be forgotten as long as we live life like they did, serving others and making everyone your best friend. I hope to live their example. To Chief Furland and your team, thank you for caring so much about us. We often disregard our own safety, but you never do. Thank you to the Secretary's Office and Session staff I appreciate your willingness to help and your warm personalities. I also appreciate you never complain that my goal was to break the gavel and shreds of wood always go flying. As I end, I have one last thank you, and that's to the sister survivors. You came to me and asked me to leave. Together, we found willing partners and moved to major legislation. Senator Knizek once said to me, Margaret, if this is all you ever accomplished legislatively, it was worth it. I could not agree more. While there's more to be done, I know through your strength, courage, and persever perseverance, it will be accomplished. Sterling Reithman, Rachel Den Hollander, and Larissa Boyce, you will always be my friends and heroes. Thank you, my friends, for listening to my lengthy speech. While my time was short, I hope my impact has been large. Thank you, and God bless all of you. <laughs>